greatest legacy that uh, General Braddock left was uh, was perhaps George Washington. This was uh, George Washington's first experience with a really big professional army with professional officers uh, and being being able to work on that level and I I believe he learned a great deal Imagine, if you will, the story of the United States without George Washington as a central figure. As impossible as this may seem, the events that took place deep in the forests of southwestern Pennsylvania in the summer of 1755 nearly caused the unthinkable to become reality. George Washington was merely a footnote in the annals of history. However, it would be his experiences during the Braddock Campaign that would mark a true turning point in the life of a man who would come to be known as the father of our country. It was during this expedition and the unthinkable tragedy that followed that the iconic Washington, who our nation reveres, would emerge. The lessons learned from this experience would shape and influence him for the rest of his life. From a young age, Washington was ambitious. In the early 1750s, as tensions began to rise between France and Britain for control of the colonial frontier, Virginia Governor Robert Dinwiddie needed an emissary to carry a message to the French. Washington eagerly volunteered. This would be the first of many trips into the wilderness up west of the Appalachians. As 1753 ended and peace overtures between the two European powers broke down, the young Virginian again was sent west this time to lead an expedition to establish a fort at the Forks of the Ohio to protect British land While moving towards the Forks, Washington and his men stumbled upon a small French force in late May. Encouraged by his Native American ally, Tana Grishin, the British attacked. It was during this skirmish that a French diplomat was killed. Knowing the French would seek revenge, the naive Washington led his men to the Great Meadows, where they hastily constructed Fort Necessity. On July 3, 1754, the French and their native allies attacked. The small fort offered little protection, and Washington was forced to sign an infamous capitulation in which he admitted to personally assassinating the French diplomat. His military career seemed over. Washington becomes rather disillusioned with military service. opportunity comes up in 1755 to serve as a volunteer without having to shoulder any of the responsibility of command under General Braddock, he takes it and he serves as an aide de camp under General Britain, fearing the loss of their claim to their most bitter rival, took drastic measures. In 1755, they sent General Edward Braddock to America with an overwhelming force to evict the French from the fort. In a surprise turn of events, Braddock would personally invite George Washington to join in the expedition, since no one in the colonies was more familiar with the terrain than he was about to cross. Happy to have a chance at redemption, Washington agreed. The expedition began at Fort Cumberland in Maryland, and after several grueling weeks, the British inched their way towards the French stronghold, Fort Duquesne. Washington took ill on the trip, but was able to rejoin the main body on the final leg of the mission. Spirits were high as the army crossed the Monongahela, and few could have anticipated what was going to happen next. As the main body crossed the river, they were met by a much smaller force of French marines and their allied tribes. Using a frontier style of fighting, the French and their native allies took to cover on the high ground. The British, under Braddock's stubborn command, stayed in formation and became soft targets. The British suffered a staggering 75% casualty rate. Every officer, except Washington, is killed or wounded. It would be Washington, the most unlikely of those in the expedition, who seized control of a nightmarish situation to regroup the stragglers and the wounded 
and lead them on a terrible retreat. On the evening of July 13, 1755, General Edward Braddock died from the wound he suffered in battle. The following day, as he was laid to rest, the dream of George Washington ever receiving true British rank was also buried. Washington emerges from this disaster uh, with a greatly enhanced reputation. Uh, despite the fact it's a terrible defeat, he's not directly responsible for it. He's just someone who behaves in a brave way. It seems as if George Washington was determined that his own uh, contribution wouldn't be ignored. There are some a succession of letters which are written, which are basically picked up by influential people in the colonies, the colonial press, that make sure that George Washington's role in this particular engagement is becomes well known. And it's on the basis of this that Washington gains command of Virginia's for the Virginia Regiment, which is effectively Virginia's army in ensuing campaigns of the, the French and Indian War. The, the primary importance of this battle was that this was the major credential for Washington to become the leader of the Continental Army during the American Revolution. This was what he would present, just as if you're applying for a job you might present a resume. This was his resume and, and this said to everybody, that this guy is the best we've got to lead our troops. What did Washington take from the Braddock disaster? First, he learned from Braddock the importance of strict military discipline. In the month he spent with the general at Fort Cumberland, he witnessed the effectiveness of Braddock in preparing his forces for the strenuous march ahead. Often, the types of disciplinary actions used by Braddock were harsh, but nonetheless effective. Even during the battle, Prior to the general receiving his mortal wound, the troops under his command fought bravely. It was only after Braddock was shot that the scene turned to chaos. Washington, during the American Revolution, and especially during the brutal winter at Valley Forge, would apply many of the disciplinary tactics learned under Braddock to mold the Continental Army into a true fighting force. It goes from um, perhaps a typical young man thinking it's a glorious profession and I can I can become a British officer and I can I can do all these wonderful things and become famous to learning that there are a, a lot of professional skills and administrative abilities that are necessary to actually carry on a war and um, I think very importantly, he learns how you can lose a whole lot of battles and still win the war. Ironically, it was perhaps from Braddock's greatest shortcoming, his inflexibility, from which Washington learned the most. Although this is a complete contradiction from the strict disciplinary style imposed by Braddock, important examples of Washington's ability to improvise and become flexible helped guide the United States to victory in the Revolution. For instance, Instead of attacking New York in 1781, he took the advice of French Admiral Rochambeau and cornered the enemy in Yorktown, causing the British surrender. His lessons on adaptability and listening to his fellow officers was critical in the winning of our independence. As president, he would also keep the lessons learned from the Braddock expedition close at heart. For example, during the 1794 Whiskey Rebellion, he would use overwhelming force to put down the resistance to a federal tax. A resistance that nearly erupted into a civil war, but instead offered leniency and amnesty to those involved in the uprising. In the end, as general or as president, the lessons that Washington learned in the backwoods of Pennsylvania did indeed set the world on fire by teaching him the values of discipline and flexibility. In a leadership role. Both attributes shaped him into the man we revere as the father of our country. <laughs>